welcome to another episode of the Bella Grace podcast, where we are helping you transform your life, mind, body, and soul. Whether you are struggling to find balance using unhealthy behaviors or substances to cope, or you just want to unlock the root cause of what's holding you back from living your best life, Bella Grace Coaching can help you transform your life, mind, body, and soul. And this week, we're doing it by discussing how to build healthy relations, Jeff. Yes. Yes. Okay, let's, oh, let's do this. Yes, let's do it. So... As you guys know, Rosie and I have been friends for a few years. We met at a Bible study for at a friend of ours house, Mm -hmm. Anna. Uh, And when I met you guys, I didn't really have very many friends in the Dallas area. I didn't either. (laughs) Yeah, I I had been here since 2017. I met y'all in 2021, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it had been... What is that? 17, 18, 19, 20, 24 years mm-hmm. of not really having good, deep rooted friendships. Mm-hmm. And for me, it was important to have God centered relationships oh, yeah. with friends. Definitely. Because back home in Lubbock, I had, I had a bunch of friends, but they were all friends from my church. Mm-hmm. And when I moved, we, lost our center of connection right because we would hang out on Sundays during while we were all serving we hung out in the kids church because we served in the kids church we hung out at conferences we served together we did prison ministry together like we did all these things together but when I moved they were all busy doing that stuff still and it's hard to drive five hours to see friends yeah so i I was here and I was struggling. It is hard to live life without good friendships, someone to turn to. And I'm married and I have a daughter, but there's something about having a girlfriend that you can turn to and say, hey, this is what's going on. Can you please hang out with me and talk to me and pray? That was the big thing for me. I didn't have friends here that I could say, hey, I need you to pray for me. Yeah. And that was what I was missing for so long. Yeah. And and we're not saying that you can't, that you need friends here to pray for you. Friends can pray for you in the other side of the world. Yeah. Yeah. But it just makes a difference when they're closer mm-hmm. to home. And yeah, yeah so. Yeah, because you want to be able to say, hey, Rosie, can we go? For coffee, yeah. Hey, can can we just go for a walk around the park? That's what Tracy and I do all the time. Like Tracy will just, she will even if I can't go on a walk with her, she'll just come get my dog. <laughs> like, I'm gonna walk your dog. Yeah, you can walk yourself, Teresa. <laughs> She's like, hey, are you available to go for a walk? Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm busy. And my dog's ears are like twitching because that's yeah. the key word. We say go for a W. Mm-hmm. So that she doesn't get all excited. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Tracy will just, she'll call and say, hey, I really need to go for a walk. Are you available? Oh. And if I'm not, I'm like, no. Well, can I come get banana? <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. But it's important to keep those friendships. Friendships and connections with people are very important. Mm-hmm. However, we need to be careful about the friends and people we allowed into our um, home and our lives. And even, you know, our spirit. Yeah. Because not everyone has good intentions for you. And not everyone is for you because you're not everyone's cup of, uh, cup of tea. I'm drinking tea. Yes. <laughs> and that's okay because some people like coffee. Some people drink water. I mean, yeah, we're all different and that's mm-hmm. okay. But you just have to find the right circle of friends that are right for you friends who are going to encourage you uplift you friends who are going to pray for you Mm -hmm. friends who are not going to judge you friends who are not going to backstab you yeah friends who are not going to gaslight you yes that's all very important so Mm -hmm. how do we build those relationships because we all want them and we all need them yeah we all need them and i think we so let's start there because i think in our individualistic society, 
we have the tendency to just go on about our lives doing our own thing. And we yeah. live on our own little island. Yeah. And that might look like if you're married, you and your spouse and your kids. And life revolves around your nuclear family. Yeah. For some people, if they're single and still live at home with their parents, that might look like just doing life with your immediate family. Yeah. Mom, dad, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, cousins. I've been guilty of that. It might also look like isolating yourself to one or two friends. Um, so, but we do, we get stuck on this loop of work, yeah. dinner, sleep, repeat. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. life comes out of nowhere and it hits you. And if you don't have a circle to yeah. turn to, a community to turn to, oftentimes your island is not sufficient to um, sustain you through storms. Yeah. And so it's important to have that community around you because I know when I've talked about it before on the podcast, like when my fiance passed away, I had a whole slew of people around me, friends. I got judged for it because I had like five people living in my house, (laughs) but it was the only way that I could cope and survive that time because it was just my my daughter and me my brother but he was a nurse at the time you know everybody has their own lives and so it no one can be there with you 100 of the time so it's important to have a bigger community yeah who can come in and bring dinner or bring drinks i once had this friend who told me you have to have like Five different kind of friends. Mm-hmm. A friend that you can run to for Jesus. <laughs> a friend that you can run to for prayer. And another friend you can come to for certain different things. Mm-hmm. And I never thought about that. I guess because to me, I I feel like a friend should all, like one person should all have that. Should meet all the needs. Yes. Yeah. And, I mean, we're not perfect yeah. and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Because I'm sure that you could probably run to me for like, I don't know, what would you run to me for? <laughs> I go to you when I need to laugh, when I need to have fun, yes. when I need wisdom. You're so you're a pretty diverse friend okay. because yeah. yeah, because I know I'll that you're work out too. yeah, <laughs> yes, and fashion advice. Oh, <laughs> you're so yeah. fashionable. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, so this is from Rosie. She bought it. It's my early birthday present. My birthday is in what a month? Yes, less than a month. Isn't it cute? She's so fashion fashionable. I, I thought I have the same yes. one, so um, maybe one day we'll be twinning. Yeah, <laughs> we'll twin it out. Yeah, um, but anyway, so yeah, you're you are you're a versatile friend, and but I have other friends too yeah. who serve different purposes, and yeah. I serve different purposes mm-hmm. to different people yeah, because different people bring out different things of yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. So for one of our friends, I am her mom, you oh. know, her mother figure when she knows she's I'm a big not, sister to a lot of. Yeah. When she knows she's not doing what she's supposed to and she wants to kind of be called out on it oh. and given some guidance oh, back to where. Stop. Yeah, exactly. She <laughs> comes to me and yeah. she will sit on my couch for hours and we will talk through it. And I'm like, listen, stop doing that. Do not do that. <laughs> Why do you keep doing that? I told you. That's it. No. Yeah. And then for another friend of ours, like she comes to me when she really just like needs to unload and like mm-hmm. not feel guilt and shame yeah. about the things that are going on in her life because I'm a safe place. Yeah. I am a place where she can come and not feel judged. Yeah, I'm a safe place. Too. Yeah. And with mm-hmm. you, like that's, I know that you are deep rooted in the word and so like when I was struggling last year when my mom was sick like I went to you and Anna the most yeah I love that yeah and I mean you were here we did the if gathering last year and like just having you around even uh, made my mom feel more solid Really? Yeah. Oh. So you are. You're this you're is the first here. Yes, you're right. right that I have that impact on you and others that makes me feel good because mm-hmm. I feel like yes, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. You're a very 
calming and steady foundation place to land in a storm, but you also bring humor to it. I always bring humor yeah. because upper situations need something funny. <laughs> I yeah. I just and I do that all the time. I, I noticed, but I think it's also because I get nervous, so I don't know how to. Yeah, like, so you're just yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> funny. I love it. But yeah, it's important to have those relationships so that when crap hits the fan, yeah. because the crap has hit the fan for me, yeah. and I didn't have those solid relationships. And I've told y'all about it before, but when my stepson. My daughter's half brother <laughs> um, died by suicide March of 2020, and it was before I met y'all. Yeah, and I did not have a solid foundation of community here. And we all know he passed away on March 13, 2020. Yeah, and that was the last day that the kids in Texas went to school because spring break started the next week. And the state of Texas basically said, like, everybody's going on spring break and we don't know when we're coming back. The yeah. schools are closed indefinitely until further notice. Mm-hmm. And so I had to grieve my stepson and I raised him from when he was a little guy until, I mean, he was adopted at 10. And then even then his adopted mother let me in my daughter be a part of his life. He was at all of her birthday parties. We went to his baseball games. We went to his football games. Like he would call her every Friday night and I would come home and they'd be on, you know, video chat. Like they, we were all very close. And so grieving him without community was the hardest thing. My brother, who has always been my rock, lived in Oklahoma City at the time. Maybe he was in Kansas already. I can't remember, but he did not live here. And so him and my sister-in-law and my nephew and niece came down for the weekend. But when they left on Sunday, I was by myself again. Yeah. And I had my husband and I had my daughter and my poor husband was trying to help both of us grieve. But like we said, one person can't do it all. One person can't oh, be, yeah, one person cannot serve all of your needs. Yeah. And when you and your daughter are unable to get out of bed and function properly, and there's only one person here to try to help it's you out, it's a lot. It's a big load on just one person. Yeah. I mean, it can be overwhelming also. Yeah, it was very overwhelming. And that season is the reason I stopped drinking. Yeah, Uh, because it got to where I was working from home. He was the car business was shut down for about three months. So we were just home and it was like I'd wake up early, get all my work done, be done by like three, four o'clock in the afternoon and start drinking. And then we wouldn't stop until. Yeah. And so it was just that constant cycle because I didn't have anybody. Mm-hmm. All of my family was far away. All of my friends and family were dealing with the pandemic and all of that uncertainty. And so it was literally me sitting in my backyard with a bottle of vodka or a bottle of wine, FaceTiming, video chatting, anybody who would answer just desperate for community. And so when I quit drinking in August of 2020, I was like, I have to make friends. I can't go through another season like that alone. It will kill me. It will. And that's when I really, I had always known the importance of friendship and I'd always had a community around me. Always. I was the hippie commune mom. (laughs) (laughs) My house was known as the hippie commune. Like I took in strays. You could come to Teresa's house for dinner. Like (laughs) I used to take in stray dogs. (laughs) Yeah. So you get it. My door was always open. Like all of my old friends from when I used to do drugs, like they knew if they were ready to get sober, they could come to my house and I'd help them get sober. Like it was, that was my house was always open. And then moving here, 
It was just my husband, me, and my daughter in this house. Yeah, because you're somewhere new and you have to start from scratch. Mm-hmm. And it's hard. It is hard. Find friends, especially as adults. Because yeah. when you're little, you're like, oh, can we share? Can we play together? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. You're and you just bond. Yeah. yeah. But now you're like, you have to bond on your beliefs. You have to talk about how do you live your life? Well, you know, what kind of habits you have mm-hmm. or hobbies yes. and interests. Mm-hmm. And when you live in a world like we do, where it's like work, go to, you know, work, yeah. dinner, sleep, work, dinner, sleep. It's hard to it's make hard friendships. Yeah. It's hard. Um, that, that same thing happened to me when I moved here because mm-hmm. I was raised okay. in Chicago and I moved around a couple of times from Texas to Chicago, back and forth. But anyways, but I've been here now for 10 years mm-hmm. and I moved from Chicago. But when I first moved, it was, I was so depressed too. I got homesick because I was so used to being surrounded by my big family, my mm-hmm. sisters and friends and Places where I grew up and with people that I just knew from school. So having to be here in the new city was really hard. And I was so, so depressed. Yeah. And it was like, I love my husband and I know he tried his best, but he is my best friend. Yeah. And, but there's only so much a person can, can provide for Mm -hmm. you because <clears throat> if I need makeup advice, <laughs> yeah, you can't ask advice, your husband. outfit advice. I mean, he's my my husband's very simple, but laid back. He's like, oh yeah, you look yeah. good. You look good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, but like, does this color really go with my skin tone? Top? Does it he's wash like, me yeah. out? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. So, but I needed that sisterhood too and mm-hmm. that friendship and. I feel like I tried so hard with some of my sister in laws, mm-hmm. and it didn't work because yeah. we're we're like you're just different. Yeah, yeah, we're just different, and that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> but sometimes, like when you want a relationship to work so bad because you're lonely and depressed, you end up sort of stop. You end up lowering you, your standards. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you end up also changing yourself mm-hmm. so that you can fit in the square. It's like you're a circle, but you're trying to fit in the square. square. Mm-hmm. And only because you are lonely, you are depressed, and you just want to feel that feeling of belonging. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you end up being unhappy at the end because... They're all, they're different. They're not your cup of tea. Mm-hmm. You're not there. So that's okay. And then it's like, okay. Yeah. But, <clears throat> but yeah. And it, nobody has to have hard feelings. No. Like, I think that's no. where we run into a lot of issues yeah. is when we don't mesh. Yeah. And instead of just accepting it for what it is, yeah. we gossip or we negative talk yes. about them. Or we talk behind their back and we're like, oh, so-and-so is so catty or so-and-so yeah. is a, you know what, like, and, and then that's how drama starts. Yeah, and, and you see, for me, I'm okay with being, like, different mm-hmm. and I know how I am. So I I know myself so well, too. I, I just know myself <laughs> so well. So I know what, you know, what I, I like, what I'm, to- what I'm able to tolerate and what yeah. I'm not. But... <clears throat> And and I'm also very accepting of others and their individuality mm-hmm. and uniqueness about them. And I love that about people. Yeah. Like, I'm not like, oh, I'm not going to talk to you because you're not um, the certain type that I usually talk mm-hmm. to or the kind of friend. No, because I feel like God calls us all to to get along and be united um, yeah. for his his glory, you know, yeah. for, mm-hmm. for community. But a lot of people don't think that way and don't know that. And they just are like, no, they'll feel offended or they'll feel like your light is too much for them mm-hmm. or they'll feel like you're too, I guess, too good for them in other words. Yeah. Or they'll start judging you because you're different because you're not like them. Mm-hmm. And that's wrong because how are you supposed to learn and grow if you don't try to connect with someone else who isn't like you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's how we learn and grow mm-hmm. and learn more about other cultures. Yeah. That's a, that is a big one for me. I like to, I like to make sure that my friendship group is diverse. Mm-hmm. 
lots of ages, lots of stages of life. Like when you come over to my house for our big group yeah. get togethers, when we have like 35 people in here, there's, there's different people. Yes, there's yeah. all different races, all different yeah. ages. We have older people, younger people, single people, married people. There's kids running around. Yeah. There's people in here who don't ever want to have kids. Like, it is a whole mix of people. And I love that. I think that's what I love about coming in here with, for parties. Yeah. <clears throat> Not only for you guys, because I love to eat. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the other but, thing. There's always a mix of food. Yes, Everybody brings yes. their dishes. And, and I love that so because different. we're we're all learning from each mm-hmm. other. And I love that. And I feel like that's supposed to that's how it's supposed to be yeah. because that's how God's house in heaven is. Yeah. He created all of us. Maybe we're all different colors and shapes mm-hmm. and sizes and you know, but we all want the same things. We're all human. We all have a heart. We all have red blood. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. we can all learn so much from one another's cultures and backgrounds and and um, even our beliefs. Yeah, yeah. No, I I get I get flack all the time because I have friends that are different religions too, and mm-hmm. even my husband and I are different in our beliefs. Very different. Yeah. And so it's like, but that's okay. Yeah, you can agree to disagree, mm-hmm. and that's okay. That yeah. doesn't mean that he's better or less because of what he believes, yeah. or you're more or less because of your beliefs. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree. I have that. I have. Have you seen my "Love Thy Neighbor" shirt? I have. Yes, you were wearing it um, two episodes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> I, had, I don't know if I told you, but the guy at um, Home Good or at home when I was buying these mugs, he was like, oh, yes, yes. 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 That's they're, a they're, <laughs> <laughs> they match today. We're not using um, mismatch mugs yeah. today. <clears throat> I just want to give a shout out to my friend Melissa, who always watches her show. She is such a faithful fan. I love her. God bless her. You're amazing, Melissa. So she says she always freaks out when she watches me drink tea (laughs) um, because she's worried that I'm going to drop the mug. So she's always watching the mug. She's always getting triggered by the mug. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm going to. (laughs) <laughs> it's a little confusing because the fireplace yes. is black and then the table is a dark brown so there's this like optical illusion that like the table you know doesn't in there and so and if you're lucky <laughs> it might look like we're gonna like drop yes. it into thin air anyway mm-hmm. we got totally distracted what was i saying oh yeah yeah, my love thy neighbor shirt. It says like love thy Muslim neighbor, love thy LGBTQ neighbor, love thy atheist neighbor, love thy all the things. Like it has like love your enslaved neighbor, love your free neighbor, like it has love your addicted neighbor, like it has all these things mm-hmm. on it, and then at the very bottom it has a fill in the blank and it says love thy fill in the blank neighbor. And I think that I think all too often Christians are like the, what is it, the Pharisees in the Bible, where they thought that the church was only for holy people. And Jesus was like, is it the sick who need, or is it, is it the healthy who need a doctor, or is it the sick? Oh, I could, I could tell you so many stories about the Bible where Jesus sat with people he shouldn't he have. He shouldn't have. He yeah. didn't sit with us. It wasn't like the mean yeah. girls. Um, <laughs> well, the, <laughs> well, it wasn't. Yeah. Like, yeah. The Pharisees were yeah. like the mean girls. Isn't mm. the Pharisees? Right. Yeah, because they were the ones that knew the Bible, the super, super scholars, right? Oh. And they, they thought they were better than everybody. Yeah. And when they saw Jesus hanging out with sinners, they were like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Don't you know who these people are? If you really are the son of God, you would know better. Yeah. You wouldn't be sitting there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You wouldn't be. But Jesus at- didn't come to um, hang out with the cool people. No. And just. And the know-it-alls. And, yeah. No, Jesus came to save the broken. Jesus came so that we can have a way to mm-hmm. the father in heaven. Yeah. Well, Jesus. Here's the story about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was, I'm going to sing the little song. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 
anyways. I don't want to hear me sing because I, I'm so out of tune. She's a preschool teacher. Yeah, yes. well, so anyway, she, yes, I am. So I sing all day long and my voice is like, I want to talk by the end of the day. <laughs> well, anyways, there, um, Zacchaeus was a small man. So mm-hmm. he wanted to see Jesus come. And because he knew that um, Jesus was around. And when Jesus would go from town to town preaching God's word, people always gather around and they wouldn't let the children, you know, see also. And Zacchaeus was a little, was like a child because he was yeah. small. Yeah. Like so, four foot something. Yeah. yeah. He, so he was like my height. I guess. <laughs> I was about to say I'm so taller. shorter than Rosie. <laughs> That's it. I'm, I'm going I'm going to wear heels next day. <laughs> no. But he he was a small man, so when he he saw that Jesus was coming this way, he got on a tree, a sycamore tree, and then when Jesus passed by, he looked up at the sycamore tree and he saw Zacchaeus, and he said, "Come down, for I'm going to your house today." <laughs> <laughs> that really is how the song goes. Yeah. So, but Zacchaeus wasn't. A good man. Yeah. Zacchaeus was a sinner. Mm-hmm. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. And if you know Bible um, stories, yeah. scripture, you know that tax collectors were, hmm, sorry, excuse me. Tax collectors were um, the worst. The worst. The, the most hated. hated them. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we don't even like paying our taxes. Yeah, I mean, we still don't like tax collectors now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the IRS is not listening to Right. <laughs> But anyways, oh. well, yeah, so he stole from people, too. So when, when Jesus was like, oh, I'm going to your house today. Mm-hmm. So people were like whispering all around, why is Jesus going to go to his house? Mm-hmm. I mean, he can go to someone else's house. Like, yeah. why? Why? There was gossip. There was rumors. Yeah. Jesus didn't care. He still went to his house and he had dinner with him. And as Jesus was speaking to Zacchaeus, he um, Zacchaeus realized that he had done so much wrong and he was bad and he wanted to be better. Mm-hmm. But you see, he wouldn't have noticed this or or came to this realization if he, if Jesus would have never gone to his house. Mm-hmm. And after that, Jesus, um, Zacchaeus' heart was changed. He sold everything he had and he gave back to the people that he stole from and he gave them double. Yeah. So what what I'm trying to say with this story is that hmm, Jesus didn't come to sit with, with perfect people or, or for how much you pray. No, Jesus came to, to sit with you and he's your friend no matter what you have done, mm-hmm. no matter what you're going through. He still loves you and this is why he is he he's He's come. Yeah. And um, and Jesus is your best friend, too. Like, he listens to you. He won't judge you. He provides all your needs, all yeah. those voids. Mm-hmm. So, also, um, I could tell you another story of, of, um, of Jesus just hanging out with. Yeah. Oh, I, I guess let's do the Last Supper. Mm-hmm. When Jesus had all these friends, we know Jesus had a yes. lot of friends, okay? Yes. There was people that loved him, people that hated him, mm-hmm. but he had 12 disciples, okay? Yeah. Jesus had a fake friend. So this is what I tell my daughter. Yeah. Because my daughter sometimes, um, you know, she's learning about relationships. She's learning about friendships and how all that stuff works. And <clears throat> one time she was upset because one of her friends said something so mean to her and she, that Friend was just constantly always gaslighting her mm-hmm. and just being <clears throat> ugly to her. Yeah. So I told her, you know what? I'm I'm sorry that you know you have this friend, but I want you to know something. Jesus also had fake friends. Yeah, Jesus had fr- friends that he loved so much because Jesus loved them no matter what. He knew their heart, mm-hmm. and they still deny them. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, these people. Denied him. Yeah, denied him, backstabbed him, sold him, yeah, and betrayed him. And he still loved them. Mm-hmm. So he this, knew all that was going to happen, and he yes, loved them in spite of it. Exactly. Yeah. So I guess this is just to go like friendships. There's all kinds of friends mm-hmm. out there, and all these friends and relationships 
are always going to teach you a valuable lesson. Mm -hmm. It's going to hurt you. You're going to go through it. You're going to feel betrayed. You're going to feel sad. You're going to, I mean, everything, you know, but if you choose to love them, not because, not because of, of what they do or what they don't, but because you're supposed to love them you'll and forgive them, you'll realize that you have so much more peace inside of you because, because that's what we're called to do is to love one another. Yeah. Oh, that's a scripture. <laughs> yeah. Ephesians 4, that's 3. <laughs> If you're watching the video, she did. If no, you're not watching no. the video, I, she just I said four, but I held three, up three. Which she said no. <laughs> so it's Ephesians four thirty-two. I love that. She love <laughs> love. No, actually, it's not love. It's be kind to one another. Yeah. So God calls us to be kind to one another, mm-hmm. whether whether you know they're good to you or whatever. Yeah. You know what? You just keep walking in your own skin stay firm to who you are stay faithful to who you are and those friends are either gonna stay with you or leave and if they leave you know give them a good goodbye yeah goodbye good um riddance. yes good good yes. bid you farewell yes. good riddance and good luck yes and the ones that stay be grateful and take care of them and that's okay because some people come in your life for a season and a reason, and then they go. Yeah. A and reason, a season in our lifetime. Oh, okay, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Oh, that's this... what I tell my daughter all the time. I'm like, yeah. not every friend is going to be here forever. No. I have my reason friends. I have my season friends and I have my lifetime friends. And I still, my season friends, a lot of them were in my life for the season of when Russ passed away, my fiance passed away. And I then th- they moved on. Nothing bad happened. We didn't end on bad terms. I still love them to pieces. I'm friends on Facebook with them. They reach out to me around the anniversary every year. Oh, that's sweet. But we're not we're not close anymore. You know, we don't hang out, we don't see each other, but they were here for a season. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for them. Yeah. So I wanted to ask something. Yes. I want to, um, because you brought up the the Bible verse about be kind to one another. Yes. But does that mean that you have to put up with being mistreated? No, mm-hmm. no. that only I, with that verse and everything else, the way I see it is that you must protect your peace. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you have to set boundaries yeah. also. It's so important for you and for others. Mm-hmm. Like, <clears throat> like I can I can be kind to someone who's hurt me yeah. because that's who I am. Mm-hmm. But do they deserve my kindness? Mm, maybe, maybe not, right? But I know that from the goodness of my heart, I'm, I'm being kind, not because they deserve it or not, but because that's who I am and nothing's going to change that. Yeah. But... I know that next time I'm going to keep a distance and I can only let you into my life. I can only let you into to uh, cl- this close to me. Right. right. This That's you setting boundaries. Yeah. So, and I'll love you from a distance. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. And I'll still be kind. But once we cut that friendship because of certain things you did, you don't get to come back into my life like, yeah. like that. You don't get to be part of the inner circle no. anymore. Yeah. yeah, and if and if and if they do, then great. But that trust has, has to, to be, be rebuilt. There's actions that need to to contribute to that. There has to be a lot of forgiveness, and I've forgiven a lot of people that I have allowed into my life. Yet I have boundaries, and I know what I'm uh, what I'm willing to tolerate and what I'm not. Mm-hmm. And they know this as well, because if I don't let them know clearly then yeah, I I have to let them know like, hey, I love you and I forgive you. But you know, we were yeah. If we're ever it's gonna, gonna be, be the same. Yes, yeah. exactly. And maybe they will, maybe they, they won't. But that's only God's um only God knows that. Yeah. Yeah. 
but um yeah you you don't have to um what should i say what was your question again <laughs> does being kind mean that you have that you allow you people to, to take down. advantage of you and you know. yeah and i think that's important is like being kind does not mean that you allow yourself to be taken advantage of. It doesn't allow, it doesn't mean that you take abuse or neglect from yeah. a friend or um, being treated than like less than or being used mm-hmm. or being dismissed, being left out. Like, I don't think those, that's not what God meant when no. he said be kind. No. And so I know no, because I feel like that verse when um, Ephesians um, four thirty two, what it means is be kind. And I think in other words, it's like you can only control yourself. Mm-hmm. You can only control yourself. You you don't you cannot control what other people are going to think and mm-hmm. say or do. Mm-hmm. And I think we talked about this in the last episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, because I I hear myself again. <laughs> <laughs> I know you you start to pick up on when you're like you're yes. telling a story yes. on your face. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but this is is the same thing. It's it's like you cannot control what other people are going to do, how they're going to react. The only thing that you have control of is yourself. Mm-hmm. Like your reactions, your yes, responses, your reaction, what you're going to say, you can control your words just because you feel certain things doesn't mean you have to say certain things. Keep and, a lid on it. People. Yes. Keep a lid on it. And and it's not, no, and sometimes you do have to say certain things, Yeah. but sometimes you don't have to say certain things. Mm-hmm. It's, it's you learning to self-regulate your feelings. That is very powerful. Yeah. When, when people hurt you, when people do certain things to you that shouldn't have happened yeah. it's, or say things, yeah, it's you, you own that. When you have that self-regulation, when you can control yourself, you win. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to toxic relationships, when it comes to, to bad friendships, when it comes to certain things and yeah. people are always going to talk. Yeah. Because it's easy to slip into when people talk badly about you or when people treat you badly, it's easy to slip into a pattern of mimicking their behavior. Yeah. But it's your hurt because yeah. of what they said about you. Yeah. yeah. But if you can instead be kind, turn the other cheek, be patient, be patient and not react. That's because God is working it out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And not react. Mm-hmm. In anger, in frustration, in hurt mm-hmm. and pain, yeah. but you can just take a step back and kind of take a deep breath, regulate your emotions, and respond in kindness instead. And maybe that looks like and walking away. Yeah, being quiet when you're you're biting your tongue. Yeah, when you really want to say something, mm-hmm. and when you really want to defend yourself and say your side of the story. Because of the way they are painting you, mm-hmm. it's hurtful and it's happened. Yeah. But and it can happen. But if you just sometimes you have to be the bigger, better person. Mm-hmm. Not because of it, but because for your own peace. Yeah. Just I walk away. I've had to walk away from some friendships because yeah. I was tired of being the bad guy mm-hmm. and tired of putting on the smile and going over there and trying my damnedest to be kind. Yes. And be met with complacency. Like that it wasn't rudeness. It was just like, I was just being ignored. Like I didn't exist. And so I finally was like, you know what? I love myself more than this. I'm not going to continue to put myself in that situation because I don't deserve to be treated that way. I don't deserve to be painted as the bad person in this situation. So I'm just not going anymore. And I love them. I wish them well. I wish we could be friends, but it's not worth my peace. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't talk badly about them like I don't 
I just, it's almost like they like exist back here. Yeah. yeah. That is wisdom. And that takes a lot for you to, to be like, you know what? I love myself. This relationship is not serving me. Mm-hmm. It's not helping me to grow. It's not doing anything good for me. Yeah. And, and it's not that relationships have to, you have to get something out of those relationships right. because it's not. No. But if you don't enjoy yourself or their presence mm-hmm. and they just, you know, belittle you, yeah. you feel left out, you feel um, depressed or you just feel invisible half of the time mm-hmm. because people are do ignore you. Mm-hmm. and those things speak very loud. Mm-hmm. So when you are the bigger person and you just decide to walk away and and not talk bad about them, mm-hmm. that is wisdom and that is gold. Yeah. Because it takes a lot for you. Because you can easily say, well, I don't go over there anymore because, because of blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's not... That's that, that doesn't serve anybody. That's not kind. That's not helping it's, you. It's not helping me. No, it doesn't just do anything. Being just like them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So instead, I've just pulled away, and yeah. I just I've removed that relationship from my my life from my belt. You know, mm-hmm. I have. I always say friendships are your your best weapons when it comes to trials and tribulations in life. And what I mean is that when stuff happens in life, your friends are the ones that you, they're the bows in your quiver, right? Like you go and you pull from it. When you are freaking out because you got to go to a wedding and you don't have a dress, you pull a bow and that's your, or pull a, um, an arrow from your quiver, right? And that's your friend for you. For our friend America, it was Rosie. She's like, I need a dress. And so she pulled her her arrow from her quiver and it was rosy and you like, shoot I it. Got the girl come yeah. to my house. Like when I got shoes, I got dresses, I got everything. Yeah. <laughs> in the Bible, I think it refers to children as arrows in the parents quiver or something. I can't remember the verse, but and I'll screw it up. I don't memorize the Bible verses. I know they're general just <laughs> I'm not like Rosie I don't have a ball of right no. <laughs> but um, I'm learning too guys um but yeah but I feel like our friendships are our our best arrows because when we need someone when crap hits the fan when we're sick when yeah. someone dies when we lose a job when we need a partner on a podcast yeah. <laughs> 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 it is your friends that you turn to, yeah. they are your tribe, literally. And it's so important to have that, those people around you yeah. who can support you and who, who are cheering for you. I got you. Yeah. Like, you don't have to do this alone. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone needs a friend. We're not saying you have to have like 20 friends. No. But at least have one important friend, mm-hmm. one that is going to be there to listen to you, that has the best interest in you. Mm-hmm. Because just because they're listening to you and giving you advice doesn't mean it's the best one. Right. And that you should take it. Yeah. No. 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 You need wisdom. You, mm-hmm. you need some wise fool advice. And you also need... Um, I guess for me, when I, I want people to give me advice, I want it to be God related. Yeah. I want Godly people, friends. Yes. Yeah. I, I want friends to, to tell me like, Hey, don't do this because this is what the world, mm-hmm. you know, this is part of the world. No, I want them to tell me like, no, yeah. like, no, like give this me is what the word. Yes. Says. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 No, but, um, I, I guess it's um, with friendships. What friendships are just even family members. Mm-hmm. You like some people, you just have to love them from a distance, and mm-hmm. you don't you don't have to be hateful and nasty. Like yeah. certain things are unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Like if you have nothing good to say, just mm, yeah, like, don't say anything at all. Right? Yeah, but you can also be cordial Mm -hmm. I can be very cordial with people that I'm not really you know that I don't really vibe with Mm -hmm. and that's okay and I can because I know that there's 
coworkers or people that you're going to have to constantly be around with. Yeah. And you don't have to be nasty. They don't have to be nasty. There are certain things that can go without. Yeah. But you can be cordial, like, hey, good morning. Yeah. And, you know, or yeah. like, I'm going to, you know, you yeah. can be like that. Yeah. And that's that, that also takes a lot for you to say good morning to someone you don't like. So yes. Really, you know. <laughs> yes. But you know what? It's not about them. It's always about you. Yeah. Remember that. It's yeah. not about them. It's about you. Yeah. 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 So how do you, how do you make friends? How do I make friends? Hi. Do you want to be my friend? <laughs> I got a pencil. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I Because I have a friend right now. She just moved to the country. Okay. Like she's a city girl. She grew up in the city. Where? Um, she grew up in Louisiana, in New Orleans. I've she never been. grew up in New you Orleans. You just went to New I Orleans. I did. I did. It was so fun. You bad girl. I know. Or she was like, you bad friend. Yeah. You take me. I know. I just <laughs> studied you in my city. I love you. I'm it was so fun. Against you. <laughs> you know, it was so fun. Sidetrack real quick. We were supposed to do a college tour with Desea, with my daughter, and we couldn't find Tulane. We found Loyola, which is right next door to Tulane, but apparently Tulane was under construction, so we couldn't get into the parking lot. It was all fenced off, so we couldn't even, like, see it. And so uh, we ended up touring. We went to Loyola, and then we just, like, drove oh, around yeah, the neighborhood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, it's the same oh. same college, just okay. a different campus. Yeah. yeah. And so we drove around the Tulane area and just kind of looked at what we could. And we ended up in some of the neighborhoods. And then we, I said, I really want to see the lower ninth ward where Katrina hit and where it hit the hardest, right? Where the, mm-hmm. the major flooding was. And it was just so sad that like, I was looking at the aerial pictures um, from before Katrina mm-hmm. and it was like, before Katrina, it was like house, 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 like all these little houses, all very close knit together, right? It looked like a very close knit community. And now there's like one house here, one house there, one house over here. Finally, like a new build over here where someone's finally rebuilding. And it broke my heart. And then I ended up getting a book. It's called One Dead in the Attic. And it's about Katrina. It's a a, a news anchor. Um, no, he was a newspaper writer. Mm-hmm. And he was in in New Orleans in the days after Katrina. And so he's just like writing. It's basically like his diary. Wow. And it's really sad because New Orleans. What is it called again? One Dead in the Attic. One Dead in the Attic. Yeah. <clears throat> Where is it? It's a. Uh, it was my mouse earlier. Oh, it's on the, I think it's one dead in attic or one dead in the attic, either wow. way. Um, but it's, it was really sad because you had these tight knit communities, like in the lower ninth ward, in the eighth ward, where people were neighbors and they supported each other. And then Katrina hit and everyone was evacuated. People died. And now that neighborhood is like, bare bones like there's hardly anyone there but anyway sidetrack because I that made me think of like how in an instant like your whole community can just be washed away like physically and people that's only yeah like like in situations in life that you Mm -hmm. have no control of yeah and yeah. I, so I think it's important for people to know how to rebuild their community because for us, it wasn't Katrina. It was no. moving to a new city. Yeah, it's hard. For some people, it's, it's hard to find new people. Yeah, and for some people, it's entering a new phase of life. Maybe yeah. you got sober, <laughs> and now all of your friends that you used to use with, you can't be friends with them anymore. Mm-hmm. Or you, you cut are, you move on. And and that's what I was going to say next. Have, yeah. You have to make uh, friends with new moms. Now. Yeah, because yeah. everybody says like I'm not going to change when my baby's born and everything's going to be the same. But yeah. I'm sorry to tell you, Mother, it does. Motherhood does change it, you in some kind of way. Yeah, it matures you, makes you see the world differently. Yeah. yeah, and you can't go out partying on Friday night with your friends at the club. Friday night with a newborn. Change of 
Oh, yeah, um, diapers, <laughs> breastfeeding, or just yeah. sleeping. Yeah. So, how do you make friends in a new season in life? I I know you said, "Do you want to be my friend?" Here, I have a pencil, <laughs> but I like to joke yeah. around. I'm yeah. very playful, so for me, that always works. Okay? Yeah, because yes. I can talk to a rock. Yeah. Or- be best friend. No. <laughs> yeah, me too. No, from I don't know. I'm just um, I just I make jokes all the time. Yeah, when I see or meet people, because I feel like it makes it helps them to relax, mm-hmm. and me too. You know, yeah. and if they take a good joke or a lame joke, they take it as a good joke. Then they can laugh and we can be friends. Yeah. So, <laughs> and if they get like, oh, that was a bad joke. I mean, we can probably still be friends, but it just depends on yeah. people's personalities. And because mm-hmm. I mean, you know, people are just different, but, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it, it all just depends on where I'm at and what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. But I normally just, I don't know. I, 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 I think it's, um, that's a hard question for me. Maybe. Well, it sounds like you're saying to be genuine. Like, yeah, be yourself. Just be yourself. Yeah. Just like you being yourself. Like, I, I was I was like, I love that because I can see who you are and mm-hmm. I want to be friends with someone like you. Mm-hmm. And so not everyone's always, like, a forward with who they are. Some people mm-hmm. like to put up a, a little bit of a wall. Right. Yeah. And that's okay. But mm-hmm. and sometimes you have to dig in because there's gold. There's like yeah. with those good friends. Mm-hmm. And the reason why they have walls up is because they've been hurt. They've been betrayed. Yeah. And, and we all know what it's like mm-hmm. because everybody at one point of their life goes through that. Yeah. So, you know, and for me, I respect that too, because I know what it's like. Yeah. But <clears throat> I, I take it slow. Mm-hmm. with everyone like it's like baby steps mm-hmm. like a simple hello or hi I just moved here mm-hmm. from Louisiana like um you know um I'm, I came here because um I moved or I just got married and yeah, yeah so you know yeah, trying to find just, some common ground yeah, like something. be yourself just share yourself yeah share yourself um you know, you can be at the park. I've met friends at the park when mm-hmm. I'm playing, have my kids playing. I've met people, you know, at, while I'm shopping. Mm-hmm. I mean, people at the restaurant because I talk to waitresses. <laughs> I talk to gym. everybody. Yeah. Yes, I talk to people at the gym too. And all of those, yeah. all of those things prove that you have something in common with yeah. this person. You have some common ground. Like yeah. at the gym, you're both working out. At the park, you probably both have kids. Yeah. At the restaurant, that could be a little, you know, a little bit more tricky, but yeah. to find some common ground. But yeah. yeah, being genuine, being true to yourself, finding some common ground, yeah. um, starting small. I think another important one is to keep trying. Yes, keep trying. Yes. Um, I think another way that you can make friends is joining um certain things you like to do mm-hmm. hobby because, groups yes yeah. because when you go to these um gatherings you have something in common with the rest of them so yeah. then that that that's already you stepping into that mm-hmm. work um common ground mm-hmm. so you can be like hi I'm, we're crocheting today yeah like mm-hmm. a knitting class or yes. a scrapbooking class yeah i or know the that- class mm-hmm. i mean you can you know, yeah. you start talking about what you're doing at the moment. Mm-hmm. And then from there, you can go into uh, something a little bit more personal mm-hmm. or just keep, keep, just keep trying. Yes, keep what working. you're doing. Like, for example, like if I'm here and we're both, I don't know, we can, uh, we're talking about this kimono, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a nice color on you. I love it. Oh, I really love your hair. You compliment someone. And compliments always warm your heart and yeah, they and break, break that. down the walls. Yes. Yeah. And then you can say, oh, well, hi, my, my name is so-and-so. Um, I just wanted to let you know you look amazing. I compliment people all the time because I'm not a hater. <laughs> and I, I just, I love, you know, I love talking to strangers yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah. My husband's not like that. He gets annoyed by that. <laughs> I'm the same way. I yeah. talk to everybody. Yeah. yeah. But, but you can start with some 
where like that compliments someone mm-hmm. else and small talk can turn it to a big talk mm-hmm. or more of an intimate talk but it just all depends on the person and what is happening and where you are at yeah you know and but yeah go ahead but it's those baby steps mm-hmm. keep it going keep it bonding it's it's like a little circle don't stop yeah like yeah in aa and in a Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous. They say keep coming back. It works if you work it. Oh. Um, and I think that is very relevant to friendships mm-hmm. because I, so what I did was I signed up for connect groups at Shoreline yeah, me too. and I went to like seven different connect groups and I just like, I would go, I would, I didn't just go once. I'd go multiple times. I would go at least four or five times to each connect group mm-hmm. to, so that I could actually build those connections, yeah. which is what you're talking and about. And sometimes it takes longer, mm-hmm. not because of you, but because people need more time Yeah, to unpack mm-hmm. and to, to feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Like we have a friend age. Like I was she gonna tell, bring Dej. Okay, I brought her personally. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Dej is our friend, and she is an introvert. Yeah, I was gonna say when you were talking about walls and how yeah. people might not open up because mm-hmm. they have walls. I was gonna say or because they're introverts, and mm-hmm. I was gonna bring up Dej because she's an introvert. She's gonna probably kill us for yeah. talking about her so much on our podcast. <laughs> talk about but... our friend too <laughs> so much. <laughs> if you're our friend, you're free game because that's it. <laughs> well. Well, here's the thing. Deja tells me every time that she is an introvert, but I never got that from her Mm -hmm. because when I talked to Deja and when I met her, she was sitting next to me and I don't know, we were laughing and we were just talking. But then again, I am half introvert and extrovert. So So I know it. Yes. And I respect that. Mm -hmm. But I know that for introverts, it's really hard and it can be overstimulating sometimes just to even like be in a place where there's a lot of people. Yeah. And yeah, but I guess I'm just more of, like I told you, I'm that type of person that I see someone or I see something. And I I, I guess I can, um, I like to make people feel welcoming mm-hmm. and I like to make them seen and I like to talk to them and get to know them individually. And I'm just that person that I love to take my time yeah. with them and, I've, and I'm okay with it. And yeah. some people... Um, I I get overstimulated sometimes because sometimes they're more of like worse than me, <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, slow your roll, you know. <laughs> or I'm like, hey, hey, okay, I, uh, you're. I'm gonna go home and just sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> they drained your battery, and, and that's okay. But I yeah. mean, find your group of people. Yeah, yeah. And for me, it was I did. I went to a. Few Connect groups and it wasn't there was nothing wrong with the people it was just that we were all in a different <laughs> season <laughs> she's over here cracking herself up i'm still like i can't believe i'm talking like this. <laughs> Woo. okay oh rosie <laughs> see this is why i love you on the podcast so okay final point yes. the reason that it's important to build healthy relationships <laughs> and rosie is racking up and (laughs) proves my point exactly is that they healthy relationships help you Mm -hmm. they propel you Mm -hmm. whether it's through a storm they push you they push you towards your goals they get you out of your comfort zone Mm -hmm. they get you out of your comfort zone they're like me i'll embarrass you (laughs) and i was praying and praying and praying about what to do with this podcast what to do with my coaching business like what to do with all these things and I kept coming back to it's time to partner with people. Mm-hmm. It's time to partner with people. Mm-hmm. And you and Anna were the ones that kept coming to mind. And I was like, okay, but I don't know what role. And then I was like, finally, it just came to me. Rosie on the podcast and Anna helps me with some of the behind the scenes stuff, which she does. I I toss ideas around with her. She tells me, hey, you should do this. Hey, you should do right. that. Yeah. yeah, she's a lot of what I post more. online is yeah. like inspiration from Anna. And so, but you have brought 
such joy and such laughter to the podcast, but it, it took yeah. praying about it, right? Yeah. Like I prayed mm-hmm. about it, and prayed about it, and prayed about it. And so I think it's important for people to know that friendships, they don't just serve like a superficial right. role in your life. A lot of times God is putting certain people in your path yeah. to help you in some aspect of your life. Maybe that friend is going to be the one that teaches you how to breastfeed. Maybe just be patient. Yeah. Maybe that person. Yeah. I know some of our friends, they they taught me patience because I want to strangle them sometimes. (laughs) But they, if you will open yourself up to relationships and not lower your standards, it's just like an actual intimate relationship. Like we don't lower our standards for our husband or for our wife. Like don't lower your standards for friendships. No. Because healthy relationships are there for a reason to hold you up when you can't stand on your own, to propel you forward in your dreams or to help bring you to the next level. And you serve that same purpose for others. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so it is a give and take. And it may not, one friendship may be a lot of give, Mm -hmm. but guess what? There's going to be another friendship that pours into you yeah. more than it takes out so that mm-hmm. you can pour into that other friendship. Yeah. Not all friendships look the same. No. And they don't have to. Yeah. I have America and I probably see each other once every three or four months now, but I love her. I see her once a month. Don't be jealous. I yes. know. <laughs> I know. I need to be more intentional, no. but we're both in grad school I was and I get it. About that. Yeah. Oh, no, we're over here. I was like, oh my God. Um yeah, America and I meet up once a month, and I love that because we catch yeah. up and we're in each other's lives. And you don't have to see them every day or or every week, but yeah. it's just like at least once a month mm-hmm. is good to get together um, and touch for brunch, for yeah. dinner, for lunch, mm-hmm. or a small coffee date, whatever, just to catch up and just so that you can keep that a bond, yeah, strong and continue to grow and you know, yeah, and and flourish, mm-hmm. and that's great. You know, um, we, for our connect groups, we meet up every other week and I love that. And then, cause our lives are so busy and that's okay, yeah. but you need to make time for friends because when you make time for friends, you're making time for yourself and you never know who needs to hear you or who needs, or if you need their prayer or you just, you know, it's okay to talk to your husband, but you also yeah. need a friend. You need someone else because Someone else is going to tell you different things. Yeah. They're going to help you see in a different perspective. Yeah. And no one person can fulfill all your needs. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. But I think we covered it. We talked yeah. about the importance of building healthy relationships. Mm-hmm. We talked about how to make set boundaries. Oh, yeah. Set boundaries. Yeah. We talked about how to make friends. Yeah. And we talked about the benefits of friendship. friendship. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, guys, thank you for listening. We hope that this episode brought you some wisdom, some joy. joy. Yes. <laughs> some laughter. We hope you laughed with us. Um, I know I always crack up laughing when I'm editing these things. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share the video with someone. We are trying to get to a thousand um, downloads on the audio. So I know a lot of people, more people watch the video than listen to the audio, which I think is backwards for me. I, I'm like, how do people have time to watch these videos? I don't know. I post them. <laughs> <laughs> I share these videos. So, everybody will watch this. Yes. But yes. So we need a thousand views or downloads. Yeah. In- share with your mom, your best friend or yes. your friends. You know, even with your husband, my husband loves yeah. watching these and he shares it too. He's yes, so supportive. Thank you. So you need supportive friends and one supportive friend can help support other friends. Exactly. Yes. But we appreciate you. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Watching. Um, you can visit the show notes for ways to connect with us. Visit our website. All of those good things. Go like us on Instagram. Uh, we are at Bella Grace Co. Bella Grace. Uh, Grace has a Y in it, like the color gray, C-E. Um, and 
yeah we're also on tiktok and all the good things so yes. just go see the show notes and follow us everywhere all right have a good one guys bye, bye.